Hi from the beautiful outdoors of Colorado. Uh, one of the many things I admire about this fine state. And another thing I admire is our ability to think bigger is better when it comes to open education. But not only that, it's really our ability to make bigger is better a reality through making formalized partnerships and approaches to the work we're doing in open education. Back in 2017, we started with a bipartisan supported bill to explore open education in our state. And since then, things have grown exponentially. I'm really excited to report that 26 out of our 27 institutions eligible for grants have received OER grants and are continuing to pursue open education and OER for student success and for access. Now, our strength comes from the diversity of, of our institutions, two-year, four-year, urban and rural, and that's really where we get at this formalized big approach being the success and one of the key ingredients to open education in Colorado. Guiding the OER efforts in Colorado is the OER Council. The OER Council is made up of 15 members representing 12 different Colorado institutions and two state agencies to steer the statewide work, which includes Colorado's grant program, our annual conference, and professional development opportunities like our OER Ambassador Program. While our institutions, faculty, and staff are doing amazing work on their campuses, there are some bigger OER initiatives happening in Colorado that we wanted to share. These incredible OER efforts were made in just our first two years of OER state funding. We've trained 127 OER ambassadors and awarded more than $1.5 million in grant funding, touching more than 30,000 students and more than 200 courses. And since there is nothing more exciting than a big number, Colorado educators have saved students more than $3.9 million in a single year, which is a seven times return on the state's initial $550,000 grant investment. While Colorado might not be the biggest state, we are one of the best when it comes to collaboration and OER. Hola, soy Alegría Rivadeneira, profesora de español en CSU Pueblo, una pequeña universidad regional con un alto porcentaje de estudiantes hispanos y de primera generación. Creating OERs allows us to offer free relevant content that reflects our students' experiences, which is key to their success. In my field of language teaching, we have a large number of students who grow up speaking Spanish at home. This group has traditionally been forced into textbooks designed for second language learners with terrible outcomes. I have developed OERs for content-based classes about food, health, and linguistics. In them, my students can see their experiences reflected and develop their language skills through the use of authentic materials that are relevant and appealing. Through open educational practices, our students share their unique voices with the world. In my music and society class, students developed a 214-page book with topics relevant to them. In my food and society class, they created a website with recipes, children's books, and explorations of food and identity. Now, others can read about how a young Latino man expresses his multiculturalism through his love of tortillas, frijoles, pizza, and pumpkin pie. Hi, I'm Dustin, and this is Meg, and we believe that bigger is better. But we're also gonna talk about the fact that formal is better than informal and what that means. The ways you can formalize OER and why you should formalize OER. There's many examples that we can show to you. Meg, why don't you give us the first example? So probably the biggest and the best thing that you could do was to, is to have federal and statewide legislation. So if there's any way you can affect this, any way you can influence it, this is really what puts things in writing and keeps them permanent for a long time. Yeah, and that federal statewide legislation also can lead to federal or state dollars, grants, funding, anything along those lines. Those two are your big kind of permanent tools for um, influencing OER at a high level across the state or across the nation. Meg? Another one is federal and statewide document, documented and formally announced priorities, challenges, awards, anything that the governor would put out in writing for higher education for K-12 to say that OER is important and will continue to be important. Yeah, we really like this idea of things being out there in writing. So we love resolutions and resolutions can come from any number of places. They can come from your student body. They can come from your library board. They can come from faculty senate. Whoever can make a statement and make it an official statement of a body that there's a resolution that OER is important, it is good, this is what we do, and whatever that looks like, we love resolutions. And we also know that education loves 
strategic planning and priorities, um, policies, anything like that. So if you can get something into a policy, um, strategic planning, what are priorities at your institution, that also helps a lot. There's also all sorts of different types of institutional programs and individual programs. They can be your whole your whole university or they can just be academic affairs or just your library. Any sort of program that has kind of a formal background is something that gives you some uh, a, a pillar to lean on. So another thing that's really important in higher education especially are thing our criteria, anything that's used for tenure, promotion, evaluation. So making sure that this is something that people should do in order to move ahead is really important and helpful. And finally, and these are just some examples, there are others, assessment. Is this something your organization cares about? Are you tracking OER? Are you tracking textbook costs? Are you tracking these pedagogical practices? If you can get OER in assessment, it becomes incredibly formal for the way your university looks at itself. And lastly, we just want to let you know, there are many ways to do this. Bigger is better, but definitely formalize it. Do it any way you can. With the help of a grant from the Colorado Department of Higher Education, I had the privilege of being able to write a business law textbook with my students. Both the process and the product was well beyond anything that I imagined. The process really let my students work the pr legal principles that they were learning about in a meaningful way that was beyond anything that I was able to accomplish with a traditional textbook. They learned how to apply the principles, how to explain them to other undergraduate students, and convey meaning in a meaningful, technical way. The product itself has been amazing. We've received a lot of positive feedback from other people, instructors, students, and even parents of students reaching out, thanking us for the work that we did. But it's also been a big impact financially. So far from our institution, as well as institutions in four other states that we know of, we have saved our students $1.2 million in textbook costs. Now we are shifting the focus from our state to yours by presenting you with the challenge. It is time to use the examples of OER practices in Colorado to go big in your state. This challenge can be scaled to meet you where you are at. Whether you are involved in state policy and decision making, on a committee at your university or college, a faculty member, an instructional designer, a librarian, a student, any human being involved in higher ed teaching and learning in any capacity, this challenge is for you. So what's your first step towards formalizing OER? Is it getting OER included in criteria for tenure, promotion, or evaluation? Or getting OER written into an institu institutional policy or strategic plan? a resolution by an institutional board or body, statewide priorities, challenges or awards, or even federal or statewide legislation. Ask yourself, who are my legislative partners? Who are my institutional or consortial partners? Identifying these key players and making contact will go a long way towards formalizing OER in your state or region. How do you represent your state demographics? Recognizing strength is in diversity. It will serve you well to see the strength in difference when it comes to OER. In Colorado, difference is apparent in the support for OER coming from both sides of the political aisle and two-year, four-year, urban and rural higher education institutions alike. Also, Colorado OER council members represent Colorado's demographic and geographic diversity to function as the state steering committee. Ask yourself, what are our state demographics that need to be represented in the context of OER? And what diversity can I identify to strengthen the effort? What actions can I take to move open forward? You should now have the tools you need to take OER big in your state, at your institution, your department, your unit, or wherever you utilize OER. Remember to identify your demographic, find strength in your diversity, and formalize in policy as well as practice, and you will be on your way to meeting the OER Bigger is Better challenge.